Um, uh, when you talked about how the numbers kind of don't represent what's going on, and if something's going wrong on one end, then that means that Donovan Mitchell's due for an explosion. That happened tonight. How important is he to your squad? Uh, I mean, again, we, we know, and everybody knows, this isn't a secret, uh, that Donovan Mitchell is really good at basketball. Um, and, you know, you don't expect him to have nights like he had. And I think that's because we're spoiled, right? But everybody at some point in time has an off night. Uh, you look at a guy who had been out and missed some time and then worked his way back. Um, you know, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. But, again, you know, the confidence that he has in himself, the confidence that his teammates have in him, um, you know, I think uh, clearly, you know, he's a difference maker. Um, you know, when he's out there on the floor and he's rolling, you know, things just change. When Donovan hit his first three, it felt like the entire arena, the team kind of rejoiced around him and like together and kind of moved into a little run that you guys went on. How does the team fed off of each other's excitement and also success? I mean, I think that's one of the things that, you know, we've been missing this season so far. Um, just because there's been, you know, so many ins and outs and, you know, rotational changes because of injuries and guys trying to figure out where they fit and who they are. Uh, but, you know, this group over the past few years, you know, when you watch our bench, our bench has been like a party. Um, you know, league put in rules, you know, to kind of slow our guys down from having so much fun um, over there. And, you know, we've got to get ourselves back to being, you know, joyful in our competition um, and celebrating and having fun, you know, because it's OK. You can compete your tail off and have fun while you're doing it. And so, you know, that's the message to the group is like just find the joy in the competition. But the only way we're going to be successful is if we do it together. Uh, and there's no better way to, to be together than to celebrate one another. Evan Mobley also just all over the floor. How impactful was he tonight and how impactful can he be for this team going into the future? Uh, I mean, it's cliche, um, you know, but there is no limits to what Evan Mobley can be. Um, you know, he, he is a flat out stud on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, there's not many people who, you know, now or in the future will have the ability to impact the game on both sides of the floor the way that he can. Um, you know, and again, everybody is, you know, pressing, 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 you know, score, 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 score. But like, you know, Evan Mobley is an elite basketball player. He's not a one-dimensional guy. A stat doesn't dictate how impactful he is on the floor. Um, you know, you see him, like you said, he's all over the place, right? 17 points, 19 rebounds, seven blocks. Um, you know, he's all over the floor doing everything, uh, and that's the type of basketball player that he is. So, you know, his numbers, you know, may not be, or his points may not be what, you know, people want him to be, um, but Evan Mobley is a stud, and he can dominate a game like he did tonight. Chris. Uh, Chris Manning from SB Nation. Darius Garland on defense, what stopped you about him in, in defending Trey Young? I mean, I think he took the challenge. Uh, you know, as talented as Trey Young is, um, as good of a scorer as he is, as elite as he is as a basketball player and a playmaker, um, you know, I thought Darius did a great job taking the challenge and forcing him into tough situations. Um, you know, he also had his teammates help. Uh, that's the way our team is built defensively. It's never one man's job to slow down a guy as elite as Trey Young. So uh, our big guys, I thought, did a phenomenal job in pick and roll. But uh, Darius did a great job of taking the challenge and getting them to the spots where we needed him to be uh, so that our bigs could do their job. So, um, you know, again, you, you can't say enough about uh, the job that they did on those guys tonight in the backcourt. Thanks, BJ. Uh, JB, how aware were you of what else was going on? I mean, other than on the court around the league in the last couple minutes? Uh, I mean, we, were, you know, you look back there and, you know, we got guys back there with, you know, their, their iPads out, keeping tallies on the score, uh, you know, trying to tell us what we needed and where we needed to go. Uh, you know, that's the sole reason why we left our guys out there at the end of the game. Um, was to you know try to get as many points as we can and build the lead as large as we could. Um, you know I, we'll see what happens. I don't know what the odds are anymore since I walked in here, but um, you know again it's these these are learning lessons for us. Um, you, you know we had that Detroit game. We had a 16 point lead down the stretch. Um, you know took our foot off the gas a little bit. Would have you know again padded our differential. Um, so again, these are things that we're learning through this new new process. But again, I, I 
I am a very traditional NBA guy, um, but like this is fun, um, and it's awesome for the league. Along those lines, did it feel a little weird leaving them out there then? Because we, we talked before the game about the unwritten rules and just having you know their backups out there against your first. Yeah, game. I mean, you you just have respect for those unwritten rules, right? And you know, you have respect for your opponent and respect for the other coach that's down there because you've been on the other end of that and you understand, you know, what it's like, um, you know, to kind of feel like it's being rubbed in. So it's not an easy thing to do, uh, but, you know, the incentive is there um, and it's what you have to do. And I think, again, coaches understand that and, you know, players, you know, understand it as well. Um, I just think it's something that needs to continue to be highlighted so that people do really understand what's going on. Okay. Cam Justice News by Cleveland. JV, you've talked a lot about your defensive identity on this team. Tonight, Isaac Okoro seemed to really bring some energy out there. What did you see from him tonight, and how does the team play off of him when he's bringing that energy on the court defensively especially? Uh, I mean, he, he's got the ability, um, you know, to shut guys down and eliminate them from a game. Um, you know, he's like one of those Deion Sanders, Sanders cornerbacks, uh, Daryl Rivas type of guys who, you know, you put that guy out, out there and he's on an island by himself. Um, and he's got the ability to do that. And, you know, what it does is it allows us to do so many other things defensively because he doesn't need help. You know, he can get through screens without getting help. Um, you know, he can guard guys one-on-one -on -one without needing help. So it allows your weak side to just do so many things. And, again, like our guys feed off of each other. And I think that's where, you know, we really need to get, get to and stay is, you know, the whole of our team is the most important thing and everybody's got a job that they have to do and we don't function well if that one person's not doing their job and you know celebrating that person for doing their job you know everybody's job isn't going to be to score 40 points but every single guy in that locker room is important to us and we got to make sure we uh, accentuate that and you know the guys continue to believe in that James from 92 no oh, you change your hat huh well, he was a little cold yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a request for <laughs> No, 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 I'm done with you. You wore that hat. <laughs> We're done. Uh, yeah. Man, like oh, I'm, oh, I'm petty. I am petty. Yeah, that's too late. You wore a Cowboys hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you doubled the Hawks in points in the paint. How were you uh, guys able to do that and handle them in that area? Uh, I mean, we just wanted to be aggressive. Um, you know, we, we obviously studied the tape and watched how they defend. Um, you know, pick and roll primarily, um, and they lift their big guys out of the pick and roll to trap. You know, so when you get the ball in the pocket, you know, there's not any, there's anything but smalls left back there. So um, we want to get the ball in the pocket as much as we can and then be aggressive and then force them into rotations and then, again, continue to drive after those rotations and not just settle. So um, I think our guys did a great job of uh, just being attack-minded and understanding where we had an advantage. Last one, Spencer. Spencer Davies, Cavs Insider. How encouraging is it to see a Donovan 40 ball in the kind of way that the team played tonight? It wasn't just him. It was also with everybody else. I mean, he's so efficient, you know, as a scorer and a shot maker. Um, you know, his ability to draw fouls, get to the free throw line, get to the rim. You know, like, it, he doesn't need to overshadow a game to have big numbers. Um, you know, I think this year, obviously, you know, you play with a little more pace, you have more possession, so guys get a little, you know, more opportunities. But, um, you know, this isn't an outlier for Donovan. You know, he's not a hog offensively. You know what I mean? Like, he knows how to pick his spots, um, but, you know, again, knows how to blend in with his teammates and get his teammates involved also. Um, and, again, when a guy's got a hot hand, you know, teammates know, get him the ball. Uh, and I think that was one of those nights tonight for Donovan. Second quarter, last one for me. The, the second quarter possession that really got you guys going, where I think there were like seven passes in one possession. <laughs> um, you obviously want to see that throughout a ball game, but how many of those types of possessions do you want to see throughout a game that you feel is realistic uh, compared to when you need guys to, to win one on one matchups like Karis did in the second? Yeah, I mean, we want. Uh, as many of those possessions as we possibly can because teams can't guard that, right? And if you play that way, everybody's going to eat. 
Um, you know, there's obviously going to come down some possessions, end of games. You know, things are going to get sluggish, and you got to have guys that can make that happen. Um, you know, teams switch a lot, those types of things. You're going to have to beat switches to force another coverage. Um, but, you know, even in that, we want that to trigger something else. So uh, we want to move the ball as much as we possibly can, make teams have to chase us uh, and then suffocate them on the other end defensively. Okay, I'll wrap it up. All right.